Well, hi everybody. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to be talking about responsible AI with Llama Guard on SageMaker. And we're going to use a small new feature in SageMaker called inference components so that you're able to deploy two models, two foundation models on the same inference endpoint um, in a very cost effective way. So let's get into it. Today we're going to look at a single Llama 27B model as a reference. Um, there's a lot of responsible AI and AI safety features that's already gone into the pre-training phase of this model. So if you end up spend, sending your input payloads as a request directly to Llama 2, you're likely to get a really good, good response as well from a safety and a responsible AI perspective. Um, but what we can do is we can add a few, an additional layer of safety with another model called Llama Guard. And keep in mind that Llama Guard is actually the same Llama 2 7B model, instruction fine-tuned for specific cases or specific categories that you can even change for your organization's uh, requirements. So what will happen now is instead of sending it directly to Llama 2, you'll first send your request to Llama Guard. Llama Guard will classify whether that incoming request is safe or unsafe. And then depending on how you decide based on your organization's requirements, we'll send it across to the, to the, to the real uh, large language model, the Llama 2 one, and you can get your response and send it back to your calling service. I urge you to take a look at the model card and prompt formats for Llama Guard. And here's a link for you to review at your own time. For now, let's jump into the code and see how we can implement this on a SageMaker endpoint with inference components. All right, let's get into the code. Um, in this sample notebook, uh, the link for which will be available for you in the description below, uh, you will see that we're about to deploy both the Llama Guard model and then the Llama 27B model on the same SageMaker inference component endpoint. Uh, we'll skip through the few resources, though I would urge you to take a look at it uh, on your own time, specifically this four-minute YouTube video of what uh, SageMaker inference components are. For now, let's get into the code. I'm going to install Boto3 and SageMaker SDKs. Uh, this one is already installed on my uh, environment, so I won't run it again, but I'll just import them into my notebook environment. These are a few setups that uh, helps SageMaker understand what is the IAM permissions and roles and the buckets to be used for deploying the SageMaker endpoint. This code is uh, written in a manner that you don't need to run this notebook on SageMaker notebooks only. You can run it wherever you want and uh, it'll figure out the right uh, roles and, and regions and, and buckets on its own. Um, let's go ahead and create the model and endpoint configuration and endpoint. And you've already seen this in the previous video, so we'll brief, breeze past this particular one. We'll pull in the latest version of the large model inference container or the LMI container. Here we go. Uh, we'll create a small name of the main, uh, of the, the guard LLM, which is Llama Guard in this case. Uh, we're going to be using the AWQ version, the smaller quantized version of the Llama Guard model. So let me go ahead and create the name. This is a small utility function that creates a unique name based on the timestamp as well as the string that I provide here. So the name that we're going to uh, name it is, is this one, ending at 456. This is the crux of creating the AWQ Llama Guard model. Uh, we're going to specify the, uh, the model ID from the Hugging Face uh, a repo, and in this case I'm using the blokes uh, Llama Guard 7B AWQ. You'll notice that we're using the AWQ quantize option here, and this is just as simple as creating uh, an environment variable uh, and adding them to this, this dict over here. Uh, let's go ahead and create this model, and here we go. There we go. So now we have this new model for the safety, uh, so for the safety LLM. Uh, you, we've specified this before. Now let's go ahead and create the main model, which is the, the second model here, Llama 27B. This is what it's going to be called. And we do something similar here. We specify a few more environment variables, this time for the main LLM. 
The biggest difference that you'll notice is of course that the model ID is different. This one is the larger 7B model, which is not AWQ quantize. And the reason we've done that is to make sure that you see the difference between the two. Um, in this case, we're gonna use the VLLM uh, framework as well as specified tensor parallel degree max, which means it tells the LMI container to shard the model across all of the available GPUs on your G4, G512XL uh, instance. Uh, so let's go ahead and create this model too. There we go. So the main LLM model has been created and this is what it's called. Now we're gonna actually deploy the endpoint. And to do that endpoint, as you've seen earlier, we create an endpoint configuration, which basically specifies the instance type um, and the initial instance count. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right away. Create the names and create the initial instance counts, maximum instance counts uh, in this case. Uh, I'm actually gonna change this to uh, maximum instances of two so that we'll, we'll actually take a look at the scaling, uh, scaling up of this instance type uh, when the traffic increases. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create the endpoint configuration here. And the specifics of this is we've specified the initial instance count, uh, the model data download time in seconds, um, I've specified this as 1200 or 20 minutes. And sometimes this is useful. You can go up to 3600 uh, seconds or one hour. And this is useful for some of these larger models. These are large language models after all. So it may take some time for the initial download. Uh, and then the container startup. So SageMaker goes ahead and does a few health checks uh, at the container level itself on your behalf so that we're making sure everything is good to go before we mark it as in service or ready to consume traffic from your uh, from your production environments. Uh, you'll also notice that we're specifying the least outstanding requests routing strategy. And this is because these models are, are rather large. And uh, with this particular least outstanding requests or LOR routing strategy, we're able to pick out those instances which have the least outstanding requests so that we're more effectively uh, uh, load balancing our traffic behind our SageMaker endpoint. So let's go ahead and create that endpoint configuration as well. All right, now here's the endpoint that we specified earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and create the endpoint by providing the endpoint configuration that we just specified up here. And this step will take a little bit of time because we're actually pulling uh, the, the G5-12XL instance from the pool of instances that uh, SageMaker provides behind the scenes. And this sometimes can take a little bit of time. Uh, what's happening now is we're setting things up. Uh, SageMaker will take a few minutes to do the container download. Do the container download. It'll go ahead and uh, download the actual models uh, for you, and then go ahead and uh, specify uh, the the instance scaling aspects as well. Uh, there's a small utility function here that is uh, going to wait for the endpoint to come up. If I go ahead and, and switch to the models, I can see that my safe endpoint, which I just started creating right now, uh, is in creating status. And in a few moments, this will be fully created. Awesome, so we now have our endpoint in service. So we've created our uh, SageMaker inference endpoint. Now is the time to deploy the actual models onto this endpoint that we just created, that's in service now using something known as inference components. So let's see what this is like. These are the names of the two models that we created previously. We're gonna create the name of the inference component based on the model itself. And this takes a couple of configurations. So for example, how many copies do we want of the guard model uh, initially, which for me, I'll specify as one. We'll also specify the maximum copies of the this particular guard, guard model per instance. And this will come in handy when we do auto scaling later on. We also specify a couple more configuration parameters here. The first one being the minimum memory required. Uh, in this case, I've specified as 1024 or one gigabyte. The reason for this is um, the Llama guard model is actually the 7B model, uh, which requires at least one gigabit of memory, as well as one minimum GPU accelerator device, which I've specified here. So the inference component name is now 
this one, 456-IC. Let's go ahead and create that inference component. There we go. So this has now set up the inference component behind the scenes. While this is happening, let's deploy the second inference component, which is the main LLM as well. Um, we'll do the same thing here. We'll specify an initial copy of one. Uh, we'll also specify the maximum per instance as four. And, the, and because both Llama Guard and Llama 27B are actually the same models from a graph perspective, it's just that Llama Guard is instruction fine-tuned for safety aspects, uh, we can specify the same parameters for both. Uh, let's go ahead and set that up. There we go. And in this case, we're going ahead and deploying the inference component. Now, while this is happening, this is also going to take a little bit of time because now what we're doing is we're downloading the uh, model weights from Hugging Face, what we specified earlier. Um, it's going to go ahead and set up the LMI container on the inference component onto the same SageMaker endpoint behind the scenes. A couple of parameters that are interesting that, uh, that you might have noticed is the model data download timeout. Because these models are slightly larger, uh, they are large language models, We've specified um, 1024, uh, or rather 1200 seconds for this one. And uh, in this case, we're also specifying the initial copy count, uh, the minimum memory, et cetera, that we've specified up ahead. So now that we've, we've deployed the inference components for both these models, let's take a look at some of the configuration parameters that we specified. Uh, we already talked about the minimum memory required um, and the number of acceler accelerator devices required. Uh, we also talked about the initial copy count. Let's talk about the model data download timeout. The reason for this is you, these models are large, so sometimes it takes time to download them from, uh, from Hugging Face. You will be able to use uh, uh, your own models as well if you host them on S3. Uh, this will be much faster because the LMI container downloads using a tool called S5CMD. And you would have seen that in our previous previous uh, videos as well. Let's go ahead and wait for a little bit to uh, see if the inference components have been deployed. And I can actually run the CLI command as well to see what's happening. And as you can see, the two inference components, the first one for the main LLM is in creating stage. And then the second one, which is the uh, Llama Guard LLM, is also in creating stage. Okay, you see that the Llama Guard, uh, the smaller version, the AWQ quantized version, took a lot less time to go into service. Um, we're still waiting for the Llama 7B model, which is the non-quantized version, because this is a slightly larger version. Uh, it's still in creating stage. Okay. So now you see that both the inference components are in service. And uh, we see that in, in our space as well, we can see the name of the inference components. Let's do a small sanity check to list all of the inference components that are currently um, showing up. And we see that the Llama 27B is deployed onto the same inference endpoint, the My Safe endpoint, ending with 643. Um, it's accepting all traffic and it's in service. And then the second component, which is um, Llama 2 or Llama Guard 7B, the AWQ quantized version, is also deployed onto the same endpoint ending with 643. And it's also in service. So there you have it. Now we've already deployed both of these components. Let's now go ahead and do a small uh, sanity check and, and send some sample payloads to make sure that these, these inference components are working. So what we're gonna do now is set up a few utility tools that are Llama Guard specific. And what you see here is I can specify the instruction and the task and a few unsafe content categories. And this is something that you can modify that suits for your, that suits your use case or for your um, enterprise scenario. In this case, I've taken some of the defaults that are provided by, by the meta team and I'm just gonna go ahead and create these, these utility functions. Um, here's a small uh, example 
And this is a typical example that works well because what I'm about to send in is I forgot how to kill a process in Linux. Can you help? Um, and typically, in traditional scenarios, you might notice that the word kill is a little bit scandalous and, and some some models might uh, reject this as unsafe out the, out the gate. But that's actually not true because I'm asking a perfectly legitimate question, which is how to kill a process in Linux. Let's first do a quick sanity check. And uh, here's what we're actually sending to the Llama Guard payload. And as you can see, this is the request that we're about to send. And if you, as you can see, we're, we've specified our unsafe content categories. Um, and we've also added the uh, the actual conversation. This is what we've we've specified. I forgot how to kill a process in Linux. And let's see how the llama guard component uh, sends back as a as a option. Yep, this looks like it's been categorized as safe. So it sounds like llama guard has given us the thumbs up, and we can go ahead and send this request to the second uh, uh, llama llama two model behind the scenes. Uh, in this case, let me go ahead and uh, do a little bit of formatting and do a sanity check as to what we're up actually about to send. I forgot how to kill a process in Linux. Can you help? And here we go. Now we're going to send this the second option to the main larger LLM behind the scenes. And as you can notice, this is going to take a little bit of time because we're not using the AWQ quantized version of the model. And this will take about, it says it's about 14 seconds for the output. And let's see what the model sent back. Yep, of course. In Linux, Linux, you can kill using the kill command. Absolutely. So this is the right answer. And just for completeness sake, let's go back and send uh, an example, which is uh, clearly something that is not, uh, not safe. So I'm going to uncomment this one. It's similar to what we just sent. And I'm going to say, I forgot how to kill. Can you... Can you help? I remove the the Linux component, and now this is this is something that's scandalous. This is something that I don't think a lot of enterprises will allow their users to send in. So let me go ahead and see what uh, what happens now. We're gonna wrap it up in the same unsafe categories for Llama Guard to understand what we can allow and not allow, and this is the conversation that's actually going in as part of the payload. And now we're gonna send this payload into. Uh, the llama guard component and uh, here we go this is the one that we specified and there there we go it's specified this as unsafe and therefore we should not continue and probably throw an error to the to the user um, that this is something that we do not allow for this uh, for this endpoint now let's go ahead and skip to the the fifth optional part of this demo which is auto scaling and we're going to use a component of the Bodos 3 SDK called auto application auto scaling. And I'd urge you to go through this section yourself as well. Uh, we're going to specify uh, the inference component as the auto scaling parameter. And these are uh, the scaling dimensions that we're going to be requesting SageMaker to monitor. So we're going to monitor the desired copy count um, as part of our auto scaling parameter. We will register this target so that it's now something that's uh, deployed. And just for a sanity check, let's go ahead and take a look at what we just did. We said we specified the inference component of Llama 2 7B, the main LLM that we, we had previously created. We specified the dimension of desired copy count for that inference component. Uh, we have specified the role, the maximum capacity, and the minimum capacity. And it's also providing a few information, uh, a, a few information like when did we actually create it, what is the actually, what is the scar, the the scalable target ARN, and and a few HTTP errors uh, or HTTP status codes. Let's put the scaling policy in motion. This should be uh, putting the scaling policy in uh, in motion. Now, because I don't have a way to generate the traffic uh, live. I'm just going to go ahead and show you what are the current and desired instance counts for both of our inference components. So here's the endpoint. We have one G5 12x large in behind our endpoint. Uh, we have one Llama 27B, the main LLM component, and the desired copy right now is one. And then we have the Llama Guard as well on the same endpoint, and both both the desired and current copy is one. I'm going to manually change and update the inference component to three for the main LLM. 
Like you can actually do this for the llama guard component as well. But for now, let's stick to increasing or scaling out just the, the main LLM. And I'm going to run this for testing. And what you'll see now, if I run this cell again, is now the main LLM desired count is three, which means we want three components or three versions uh, or three copies of that um, Llama 27B model on the same endpoint. And if I go ahead and take a look at the status, and here's a little utility code to help you understand what's really happening. If you see currently the copy count is one, but the desired is three. And what you'll see is SageMaker will behind the scenes increase the uh, the copy for um, uh, for the main LLM and go ahead and expand this out. So now we pause and we wait for the copy count to increase, the current copy count to increase to three. There we go. So now we see that the the new current copy count is three, which means now you have three copies of the inference component running on your SageMaker instance. So there you have it, folks. We do want to make sure that uh, we do a little bit of cleanup as well, so you're not incurring your costs. Now let's clean up our, our, our inference components, the models, and the inference endpoint. So first, we delete the scaling policy. Now we specify the same parameters as before, the endpoint name, the resource ID, which is the inference component, and the scalable dimension. We'll deregister the scalable target and go ahead and delete the component. Let's, let's take a look at this and this. And if I go ahead and run my CLI, you'll see that now both the components are in deleting stage. And I can go ahead and um, delete the actual endpoint as well behind the scenes and remove the endpoint configuration, the model itself, the Llama Guard model, and then the main model behind the scenes. And these are a few helper functions to retain your variables uh, locally on disk. If you're doing this on your laptop or in a SageMaker environment, these will help retain your, your local variables uh, across multiple restarts. Um, Let's recap what we just saw. We deployed both Llama Guard, the AWQ quantized version, as well as Llama 27B, the, the regular version, um, onto a single SageMaker endpoint with inference components. We were able to send in a request to Llama Guard. We sent in a couple of different requests, one which was safe and the other that was not safe. The one that was safe can be sent ahead to the Llama 2 endpoint behind the scenes. And then we got a response uh, that we can then safely send back to, to the end user. Here are a few resources that will be helpful for you when you're going through the, the example that we just talked about. Uh, the documentation and the blog of inference components is out here. We also have uh, linked the example notebook that we just ran through so that you can do this on your own time. And I'd also like you to take a look at the model prompts uh, for Llama Guard because this is actually very nifty. You can go ahead and create your own unsafe categories, uh, things like maybe not mention competitors, uh, things like not mention safety and, and categories of that nature. Uh, this, is a, this is a very good paper to, to read through. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, my name is Abhishek Aditya, and I hope you have fun experimenting with SageMaker inference components.